Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is once again Chris Maloney for CWN, and we are presenting CWN Weekly, episode number seven. And uh, hopefully I've got the microphone thing uh, accurate this time. So uh, the past six episodes I've been doing, I have the microphone over here, and I've got a Blue Yeti. So uh, I go finally go through the PDF file as far as the documentation goes is what to do and what not to do. Well, the first thing it states is basically not to angle it because the fact is your microphone is right here in front of me and angling it basically was hitting the desk. So uh, quality is going to probably sound a little bit better. Uh, I tested my my um, feedback, so to speak, before the the episode, and I guess I was good. Won't know until the episode's officially done and over with to, uh, to hear it, but I can make adjustments uh, post-show. But yeah, like I said, CWN Weekly, episode number seven. Today is October the 2nd. Uh, 2020. So if you're listening for the very first time, thank you very much. If you're watching for the very first time, thank you very much as well. Uh, you can check us out, cwnonline.ca. Uh, that is the website for CWN and CWN Weekly. Uh, so uh, in saying that, I'm going to get into some anniversaries and birthdays, and, and my sister will never watch this, uh, but I'm going to wish her a happy birthday anyway. So today is uh, her very 32nd, I almost said first, <laughs> 32nd birthday. So uh, yeah, happy birthday there, sis. Uh, if you ever hear this, uh, you know, I gave you a shout out on the show. If I ever become rich and famous, again, I give you a shout out on the show. But yeah, happy uh, 32nd birthday to my uh, sister there. Uh, October the 4th, Alexis Alligator Davis, uh, 1984. So she is 36 on the 4th. Uh, a death to announce, and this is uh, not uh, not anything new, but uh, Brian Pillman passed away on October the 5th, 1997. Uh, so RIP Brian Pillman. Uh, as far as he goes, he is one of the guys I probably grew up watching first. So here in Canada, especially in the Maritimes, it was always uh, Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling as well as Stampede Wrestling. So I was well aware of Brian Pillman, uh, you know, long before, I guess, he hit WCW and then the WWE. Uh, and this was, I guess, would have been mid, uh, mid 80s, so to speak. But uh, yeah, Brian Pillman, uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, passed away on October the 5th, 1997. And birthday being celebrated. So on the 7th, Paul the Butcher Vachon was born in 1937. So mathematically, if I do the math here, what we got 63, 83. So yeah, be 80, uh, 83 years old on the 7th. So happy birthday to uh, Paul the Butcher Vachon there. So, big thing as well today, and I, I found it kind of cool that the, uh, uh, the CWN Weekly was going uh, today because the fact is it is the 30th anniversary of Y2J, Chris Jericho, Le Champion, uh, Demo God, uh, any nicknames you want to call him, but um, Jericho's 30th anniversary in the wrestling business is today. In saying that, somebody else's anniversary in the wrestling business today is also Lance Storm. So back on October the 2nd, 1990, they faced each other in a match. Um, and then rumor has, I guess, they had gone to a battle royal uh, post-match. Unless that was the tag team, but I do believe it was the one-on-one -on -one that led into uh, a Royal Rumble-type battle royal. But 30 years ago today, Lance T. Storm and Chris Jericho went at it in a ring for the very first time. And 30 years later, Jericho still wrestling. Uh, Lance Storm, I don't think, is wrestling anymore, but he is uh, helping out. He does backstage as well as producer roles and this and that. But uh, congratulations, Chris Jericho. 30 years in the business, he has pretty much done anything uh, and everything. You know, ECW, uh, WCW, he's done WWE, obviously, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So Jericho's been all over the map. Uh, he's also done, uh, J uh, not J uh, Japan, but uh, Mexico as well. So Jericho, yeah, congratulations, 30 years in the business. I've had the honor of meeting the guy just once. Uh, I have the honor of seeing him quite a few times as far as matches go and this and that, um, you know, live. Uh, one of the greatest matches I think I've seen live was him versus Dolph Ziggler at uh, Budweiser Gardens, which is now, well, I, I guess back in the day it used to be called uh, John Labatt Center. But, uh, you know, back in uh, the day when he was at the JLC, so to speak, he was... Uh, in the ring, I think it was him and Dolph Ziggler, and they both got knocked out. So the house show lights come up. Everybody starts to leave the arena. <laughs> and anyways, Jericho is still left in the ring, laying down face first. Ziggler's right beside him face first. And they're laying there probably a good five to ten minutes post-match. And all of a sudden, I'm kind of like, what the heck is going on here? And the next thing you know, Jer Jericho just gets up, says something to Ziggler, and they go to the back all grumpy and everything else. But um, I know, I think main event with Kofi Kingston, I think somebody else as well. 
Uh, but I think it was a tag team match. And then, but like I said, Jericho was just being Jericho at a house show. And it was uh, absolutely awesome to see. I was at WrestleMania 18 uh, at uh, Toronto Skydome, now known as the Rogers Center. Got to see him against, uh, obviously, Triple H in the main event, which should have been the semi-main event, uh, going back in history. But uh, And that was, uh, God, that was 12. No, not not even. Whoa. <laughs> well more than that. Uh, we're looking at uh, 2002, so 18 years ago. So, yeah, Jericho's been in the business for a while. And I can go on and on and on about memories and stories about the guy, but the uh, fact is uh, he is one of my favorites. You can see the WB uh, three-disc uh, collection DVD behind me there. And, uh, yeah, so Jericho, uh, congratulations on 30 years in the business. Uh, some personal news, uh, I'll tell you this. So last week, anybody who's listening or watching will know that I did a live episode on Twitch. Then I did a YouTube premiere uh, last Friday. The reason for it is this. The fact is... I got invited, well, I shouldn't say invited, I got the honor of being part of the WWE Thunderdome, second week in a row. And it was the second week in a row because of this. So the first week, I had all of this setup going on behind me. I had uh, this big old championship belt hanging up, um, you know, trying to get the perfect setup. I was, uh, well, probably about 20 feet away from my router. Uh, the internet signal was, wasn't the greatest. And, you know, be, beyond that, I, I have to go and say... It was probably me trying to do all the setup stuff, and all of a sudden I ended up getting booted. Well, I couldn't get back in. So the way it works is basically you're setting a queue. You're told to arrive at a certain time. I'll go more into that in, in uh, a moment or so. And once that happens, videos start to play. You get uh, you got your headphones on, and people are going into your ear. And this, well, you know, you got Greg Hamilton who is uh, welcoming you, and then you have moderator, obviously. Well, about probably. I'd say less than five minutes into 205 Live, which is taped before SmackDown. I get the boot, couldn't get back in, and I was like, okay, and that sucked. <laughs> so anyways, um, you know, I was like, you know what, let's try this again. So here, here's the story. So Wednesday registration, and it's, you know, you have to refresh, refresh, re refresh, so WBThunderdome.com. So I'm on the website, hit refresh, SmackDown registration comes up again. I go and register, get through. That's stage one. So confirmation email comes, that's stage two. Then all of a sudden it says, next thing you know, it's like you'll receive an email the day of to let you know to click this link to, you know, go into the actual uh, Thunderdome itself. So I wait for the link and it usually arrives, I think about uh, noon shortly after that. So link, uh, so the email arrives, the link's sitting there. I can only click it once, so I can't click it until I'm, I'm ready to, uh, you know, to set. Seven o'clock rolls around, that's check-in time. So I hit the link. Uh, everything's closed down. Better backdrop. I'm sitting probably about five feet away from my router at this point. Uh, no backdrop, just the couch. Uh, had uh, the best lighting I could possibly have. Uh, but the fact is, when I when I was on screen, when I saw myself on, on screen, probably about five six times in the night, um, you could see obviously my backdrop because all the lighting, but you couldn't necessarily see uh, my my face wasn't the greatest. So. Uh, you know, if I ever do a Thunderdome again, it'll be, you know, uh, I'll change up the lighting and this and that. But uh, one of the rules was don't have any backdrop, uh, you know, make sure that it's only you in the camera and don't have a spotlight on your face. So, as you know, when I'm doing this podcast right now, I have a lamp up here uh, that's giving me better lighting. So I was kind of concerned about that. So anyways, I get in and all of a sudden you're watching videos and, and highlights and this and that and, uh, you know, music's playing and... Uh, uh, you, you know, moderator, well, Greg Hamilton comes in, welcomes you and says, you know, kind of goes through the rules again. Moderator comes on, says, hey, you're about five, 10 minutes away from uh, 205 Live. So 205 Live happens. I'm sitting there and, uh, you know, they're, they're, hey, do excitement. So thumbs up and, and cheers like this and everything else. And the theme music for 205 Live comes on and, I'm you know, I'm OK, I'm in again, you know. And last time I was the first time I was part of Thunderdome. Basically, I got end up getting kicked during Aria Davari, and I was like, "Oh man, this sucks." And so last week, so last Friday, I'm on the you know in the Thunderdome, and uh, you know connection's good, no backdrop. I'm doing what I'm, I'm being told to do, so thumbs up, and cheering, everything else, and thumbs down, you know, booing, uh, you know. And here comes Aria Davari again, and I'm like, "Oh no, <laughs> uh, deja vu. Here we go." But luckily, I made it through. And, you know, I end up making it through that. And all of a sudden, they, they give you warning, too, through the, through the email and say you may not be on the whole show. Well, whole duration-wise, you're looking at three hours if you make, uh, you know, from the time you check in all the way through the end of SmackDown. So 7 o'clock, you know, Eastern time all the way through to 10 p.m. So 
205 Live ends and they've taped a couple matches. So I'm still sitting there. I'm back in queue. I'm listening to music. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, you're 10 minutes away from SmackDown, five minutes away from SmackDown, 60 seconds away from SmackDown. And then next thing you know, SmackDown happens. You see the Thunderdome and the, the lighting and everything else. And it's very, very cool. And then next thing you know, I'm looking and hey, I see myself on TV. I saw a glimpse of myself on 205 Live, but then I see better glimpses of myself on, on uh, WDB SmackDown. And throughout the night, throughout the two hours, I end up lasting the whole show, which was kind of cool. And I pointed out to my wife later on, and she's like, yeah, I can see, you know. And like I said, the lighting wasn't the greatest, but the fact is um, I was still on camera. So it was kind of cool. And like I said, about five or six times, and um, they kept saying to you throughout the night, uh, you know, the more cheering you do, the more animated you are, the likely you are you get better on camera. I think I might have been fifth or sixth row. Uh, up on the left hand side if you're looking at the screen so i got pretty close to being like kind of front row center uh, i think my lighting would have been better i think it would have been better uh you know i've got a toddler and my wife was in the other room so i couldn't necessarily cheer but i could do the actions and everything else so like i said i was probably about five uh, fifth or sixth row uh, the last time i think i saw myself was the um i think the uh, who was alexa bliss Lacey Evans match and I was uh, you know pretty much crystal clear uh, there on the screen I was like wow this is kind of cool you know so definitely good experience uh, highlights about it was the fact is you get to hear the backstage stuff so the Matt Riddell uh, versus Baron Corbin match I knew the outcome probably about two minutes into the match and I knew what was going to happen so they said you know they're, they're talking backstage and it's a live mic so they're not always muted so anyways I hear the fact that Matt Riddell is going over and um I think that's the way it went. It was a Barry Corbin. No, Corbin went over, and then Matt Riddell did a promo uh, right after the match, and I knew about the promo coming up. There was other uh, things that had happened with regards to, I could hear Vince McMahon, and, uh, you know, only twice, but the fact is that, you know, the, the guys who were with him were like, Vince, you want the music cued? And Vince was like, yes, and all of a sudden, boom, the music would hit. So it's kind of cool because you're part of that. It's a virtual experience. Obviously, we're dealing with COVID-19 and everything else. But the fact is, when it comes down to it, it's it was kind of on my bucket list. It's something I wanted to do. And my buddy Sean had done Raw and, you know, three hours plus main events. So you're probably looking at four hours. And I'm more of a SmackDown guy. I always have been just because of the talent I've always had on that show. Uh, you know, when they first broke out and then they did the original brand split. But it was long story short, it was a fun experience. I get to hear some backstage stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's off my bucket list. So you probably won't be seeing me do it again. Uh, hence the fact I'm doing the show live tonight. But like I said, if you have the ability between now and the end of the month, because that's where the release runs out at the Amway Center, and rumor has them going back on the road, uh, like I said, go and basically, you know, try to get into the register and then basically be part of the show. And uh, it, it is a pretty cool experience that I can cross off my list. And uh, uh, my wife recommended printing out a, a picture of me on screen and then posting in my uh, my daughter's uh, kind of uh, scrapbook, baby book, so to speak, and be like, hey, kind of look what dad did. So and it was cool experience. Uh, other news, and I won't go <laughs> too windy with this, but um, you can see behind me there, WB uh, 2K Battlegrounds. I end up purchasing on Monday, uh, this past Monday. I've only played the game once. Uh, definitely different feel from WB, uh, WB 2K20, which I had last year in the 1918 and so forth. Uh, but uh, it's more cartoonish. It's more animated. Uh, you know, a multiple uh, kind of uh, uh, matches you can play, anything from, you know, tag team steel cage matches to, uh, uh, I think there's a Royal Rumble, there's uh, uh, tier systems, everything else. And uh, I think there's the only few, like there's a huge roster that was announced, but there's only a few wrestlers that are actually, you can, you can pick because a lot of them are locked up. So you have to, you can buy coins, I think, with like real life money if you wanted to. Uh, you can also, if you win matches, participate in matches, you build up another system. There's like a, a coin one and then there's like a blue tier as well. I forget what the blue tier is right now. But it's a pretty cool game. Uh, I will get into it further. Uh, probably do a small little review on it once I get playing it uh, a lot more. But uh, yeah, it is a pretty cool game. It's like only uh, forty nine ninety nine. I got it from EB Games uh, here in London. So yeah, it's uh, if you have the opportunity to basically go and uh, pick up the game and play the game, it's it's fun. I also got Madden NFL two K twenty one, which is pretty cool as well. And I got uh, NHL two K twenty yesterday. Twenty one's not out yet. And eighty dollar price tag. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to pay that, so I ended up getting uh, what was it, two K twenty, not two K twenty, uh, NHL twenty uh, for uh, I think only twenty dollars. So it's uh, you can't beat that price. Anyways, guys, that is it as far as personal stuff goes. 
Um, news of the week. So breaking news regarding two Clash of Champions matches. So if you watch Clash of Champions, and, and you can go back and watch the prediction show that I had done, the recap show I had done, uh, two matches did not take place. So Bailey versus Nikki Cross. Nikki Cl- Cross was not cleared to wrestle, uh, so that match did not take place. Bailey ended up taking on Asuka instead. Uh, also, the Women's Tag Team Championship match didn't take place, so that was the uh, Riot Squad uh, was supposed to take on Nia Jax as well as um, Shayna Baszler. Uh, so Shayna Baszler, uh, Nia Jax, and uh, Nikki Cross were not cleared to wrestle, so neither one of those matches had taken place, and that was announced during the kickoff show officially uh, by the WWE last Sunday. So, uh, you know, uh, COVID talks, of course, taking place, so they look like to be uh, isolated for a good 14 days. Uh, so, you know, this Sunday should be about seven, so another probably nine, ten days, and we'll see them back on TV, uh, hopefully. So get well uh, to those three women there. Uh, two-night draft coming up to Raw and SmackDown this October, so that was announced as well on uh, last Sunday. Uh, so October the 9th is SmackDown draft. Uh, part two, night two, is going to be October the 12th on WWE Raw, so a two-night draft taking place Um and it's interesting, too, because SmackDown tonight has KO, who's a Raw superstar. So it's um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the draft. I mean, it's um, COVID's changed things up a lot. Not having a full roster has changed things up a lot. Uh, but the fact is, I mean, it still is a draft. And once they get out of this and once COVID is, is you know, actually uh, a thing of the past, um, they'll have more, uh, you know, they'll be able to focus more on the rosters then. Um, not so much I'm looking forward to the draft, so to speak. Uh, but it is, you know, WB tradition, so uh, we'll have to wait and see who ends up uh, where. Uh, from there, uh, Clash of Champion results. Like I said, you can check that out. CW recap. I did a whole recap, uh, recap show on it. Um, and this I don't understand. It's, I love doing CW Weekly and the prediction show and the recap show. And most of the time I always go live. But the fact is with the recap show, and it, it, it was this one, I think the one I did for TakeOver, the last takeover, so takeover 30 that had taken place. Both of those, um, huge hits, huge amounts of views on those. So thank you very much to everybody. Uh, but not uh, not necessarily sure why people enjoy the recap shows more than the, the weekly and the predictions. But uh, we'll see if I can balance that out. But uh, again, thank you for uh, for watching and, and listening if you did for the recap. But like I said, I uh, won't go into details of the Clash of Champion results. So obviously, Roman Reigns retains. Uh, SmackDown tonight It's going to be uh, the coronation, so to speak. Um, but uh, you want to check out the results, go to the recap, uh, CW and the recap uh, for Clash of Champions uh, last Sunday that took place live. Uh, Hell in a Cell announced for October 25th. That is the next WWE pay-per-view taking place. So Sunday, October 25th, uh, 7 p.m. Again, we'll be doing a prediction show as well as a recap show for that. Uh, Rob Van Dam, Katie Forbes, no longer with Impact Wrestling. So that was announced on the 28th. Uh, apparently, they were working a per t- uh, appearance deal. And uh, anyways, since uh, everything had ended with Sammy uh, Callahan, uh, that was it. So they are not signed by anybody technically right now. Uh, RVD is up there in age, um, you know, so it, it'd be interesting to see where he lands, if anywhere at all. Maybe he'll, you know, just uh, decide to hang them up. But um, anyways, yeah, RVD, KD4 is no longer part of Impact Wrestling there. Um, retribution members test negative must quarantine. That was on the 28th as well. So what happened is the five members of, uh, retribution, um, tested negative, but because of just the fact that they've been tested and exposed to somebody who was, uh, you know, COVID positive, uh, they're in quarantine now for 14 days. So that was announced on the 28th, which was on, uh, Monday. Uh, so again, they're looking at two weeks. So we're looking at, uh, you know, not this coming raw, but the next raw, so to speak, um, for, you know, them to be coming back at least, you know, it could be a couple days later than that. It could be the next Raw episode, so to speak, after that. But, uh, yeah, they're out for uh, 14 days as well. Um, James Storm says pandemic derailed plans for WWE debut after WrestleMania. That was on the 28th as well. Uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet interview he had done uh, said he had plans to uh, debut to come in for Wrestle, or sorry, debut after WrestleMania. So probably would have been the Raw after WrestleMania. Uh, COVID obviously messed everything up. But James Storm has had a touch of the WWE as far as um, uh, NXT goes. So it would have been nice to see him on the main roster there to uh, to see what uh, he could have done. Uh, obviously, former uh, Impact World Champion, former Impact World Tag Team Champion. Uh, don't think he was ever X Division Champion. 
but he's a he's a name who's been part of the business for a while. He also was NWA or is NWA based and is tag team champion over there. I think with uh, Eli Drake still. So, anyways, uh, a huge uh, huge loss for WB for uh, you know another COVID related thing because uh, James Storms uh, could have been uh, you know excelling in the WB uh, right now if it hadn't been for COVID nineteen. Uh, so, Access TV and Impact Wrestling present first ever Impact Week. I'm just going to bring this up in an article here. So, released on the 29th of September, Access TV and Impact Wrestling join forces to present the first ever Impact Week starting Tuesday, October 20th, leading into Bound for Glory pay-per-view on Sunday or Saturday, October 24th. So, they've got one, two, three, four, five days of it. Uh, Impact taking place Tuesday, the 20th. Uh, special talk and shop taking on uh, taking place Tuesday, uh, the 20th, right after Impact, so 10 p.m. Uh, we've got Wednesday, which will be uh, This Is Bound for Glory special. Uh, that's Thursday, October 22nd at 10 p.m. And then the 24th, it'll be replayed at 6 p.m. So that'll be the Saturday. Um, where are we here? Impact Live Countdown to Glory. Saturday, October 24th. So that'll be the pre-show for them, 7 p.m. That's Access TV. All of these are Access TV, by the way. And then Bound for Glory itself taking place 8 p.m. on the 24th live on pay-per-view. So, obviously, um, Impact Wrestling takes place on Access TV down in the States, Fight Network here in Canada, and then the uh, medium gra- ground is Twitch. Um, I haven't heard anything as far as any of the specials being available on Twitch or, or um, Fight Network as of yet. Um, but uh, stay tuned to CW, uh, cwnonline.ca for more information about those. But, uh, yeah, a couple of Impact Wrestling specials coming up for Impact Week for Bound for Glory. So they'll be on Access TV, and I'm pretty sure they'll probably end up on YouTube, Twitch, or hopefully Fight Network here in Canada. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. From there, one of the biggest uh, pieces of news of the week is this. And it's simply stated on the New Japan Pro Wrestling English website, Change in New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, Directorship. Uh, big old logo for New Japan right there. And it goes at a meeting of New Japan Pro Wrestling's parent company, uh, Bushi Road's board of directors today, September 29th. The change was announced in New Japan Pro Wrestling directorship. This change will take effect at the beginning of New Japan Pro Wrestling's 50th year of trading on October the 23rd. Uh, outgoing president, CEO, Harold Maij, uh, Maij, Mai, still haven't figured out the pronunciation of the name. And coming in new, uh, NWGP, GP, NWP, w, wow, <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling President and CEO as of, of October 23rd is uh, Takami Obare, who is the current uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling of America um, CEO. So he is coming in. Uh, Maj Harold is on his way out. Uh, so huge news. Um, apparently he's the former VP for Coca-Cola in Japan, Harold is as well as he was working for a toy company as well. I'm fortunate that, you know, this is happening during the pandemic, and he even come out and apologized and said that. Uh, but the fact is, I know when he took over, there was a lot of rumblings um, from New Japan Pro Wrestling stars that they weren't uh, too keen on working for the guy. Um, half the reason, I think, and this is just a rumor, so to speak, why a lot of the guys ended up in AEW, like Omega, the Young Bucks, uh, Adam Page, uh, Cody even, uh, because they weren't happy being part of New Japan. And there's a lot of guys who I had heard as well uh, that weren't necessarily happy with regards to the mainstay roster guys, like the Tanahashis, the Okadas, uh, guys like that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, obviously, you know, the new president who's taken over for Japan, uh, Obari, uh, hasn't had the greatest ability to do what he can here in North America. Uh, because of COVID-19 and the restrictions, but uh, it'd be interesting to have one president for, uh, you know, New Japan of America as well as New Japan Pro Wrestling there in Japan. So I'll have to wait and see where that goes. Um, from there, Joey Ryan files 15 million, 15 plus million dollar lawsuit against three speaking out accusers. You know, when I saw this, I just was like, why? Um, you know, the speaking out movement was huge. Uh, impacted a lot of, uh, you know, wrestlers, uh, talent, uh, you know, throughout North America, England, and the entire world. And now all of a sudden, he's basically going after monetary damages against three accusers. It's his right, but um, I don't feel it should have come up in the media the way it did. 
Um, obviously, he got the right to defend himself, but all the allegations that came against the guy, um, it's it's tough news to see that he's actually uh, see, uh, you know basically suing three of the accusers. So um, I'll leave it at that. I don't necessarily agree with uh, the you know the lawsuit that he's he's going and putting against these three women. Um, speaking out obviously was a serious nature, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, from there, we've got Kyle O'Reilly. Is he the future of NXT? The reason I bring this up, so it was an article on WWE.com, and the reason uh, I bring it up is because of the fact I never really thought of Kyle O'Reilly as being much more than a tag team wrestler. When you're watching him now, you watch him in that gauntlet match, you watch him basically do his promos and everything else, he's got the potential to uh, basically blow it out of the water. Rumor has Undisputed Era is going to continue, but only two of the four members are going to be part of the Undisputed Era. So Bobby Fish, Roderick Strong are going to remain in Undisputed Era. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are going to go off on their, their own separate way. It would be interesting to see who they add. It would be interesting to see who becomes leader because I don't think Bobby Fish has it in him to become in, you know be, to take on a leadership role. Um, Roderick Strong, I don't know if he's got the mic work to be able to, to stand out the way Adam Cole has. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, I don't think we've ever seen that mic work. Now, he is gifted when it comes to his promos. He's gifted when he does his sit-downs and everything else. But it's, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting whether or not we see Undisputed Era versus Undisputed Era. And basically, you know, we see Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly tag team with uh, two other guys and see a new, you know, a new two with Undisputed Era and eventually have a, like a War Games thing take place. I think that would be cool. But that is a rumor right now. But Kyle O'Reilly, you know... Um, is he becoming the next future superstar or the future of NXT? I think uh, he's got the potential to. So, And uh, he's a Canadian boy, so uh, uh, he's making us proud up here. Uh, from there, we've got uh, International Podcast Day was on the 30th of September. That I bring up because it surprised me. I had no idea it exists. So, uh, yeah, if you go to internationalpodcastday.com, uh, you can check more information on that. Uh, you know, the, um, the concept of it is pretty cool. I've been doing podcasting. Um, on and off 2006, I believe. I think the beginning of 2006 is when I did my very first podcast. Technology was a lot different back then. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, anybody uh, with the ability with a microphone and, uh, you know, an opinion <laughs> can get and do a podcast. And uh, it's been enjoyable. And uh, like I said, I've been doing this on and off for 14 years. So, uh, yeah, International Podcast Day was on the 30th of September. So, uh, it uh, looks like it's a, a yearly thing. So next September, yeah, we'll uh, make it a big deal here on the show. Um, from there, details on the revival of Georgia Championship Wrestling, executive and promoting roles, broadcast ideas. So um, as of tomorrow, they get their first show. Everything's going to be done through Facebook. So if you go on Facebook.com, search for Georgia Championship Wrestling, uh, that you can find all the information about. Apparently, they're going to be uploading future episodes onto YouTube. And when I say future episodes, they're going to you know pre-record um, and then basically launch them on YouTube after the event has uh, taken place. But uh, as far as something else goes that I never knew was coming back or existed, Georgia Championship Wrestling is on the on its way back. So apparently it has the original founder. And I'm just going to bring up the article just to give uh, you guys a, a little bit of history here. Because the fact is, I don't know a lot about Georgia Championship Wrestling. You watch, you know, WB Network and all of a sudden you hear about guys passing away. You hear about Georgia Championship Wrestling. But um uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling is returning on October 3rd with a show in Eatonton, Georgia at the Elks Lodge. Promotion owned of 36 years, Grady Odom, uh, continue running Georgia Championship Wrestling events from 1990 until the mid-90s following its hiatus in the mid-80s. Uh, held re a reunion events 2011 to 2012. Uh, summer 2018, there was a memorial show held in memory of Big Bill Dromo. Um, remembered mostly for its glory days from the 70s through the 80s for the likes of Jake Roberts, Ted DiBiase, the Hollywood Blondes, that was Rip Rogers and Ted Oates, Randy Savage, Dusty Rhodes, Harley Race uh, were regularly featured in that promotion on WTBS in Atlanta. And like I said, October the 3rd, so tomorrow they'll have their first event. This is all courtesy of postwrestling.com, by the way. Uh, so for more information, check out cwonline.ca, look for that post, or check out postwrestling.com and just search for Georgia Championship Wrestling. So it'll be interesting to see uh, another new promotion uh, hitting, the new promotion, another old promotion uh, becoming new again, so to speak. So um, what else we got? WB announces that Tegan Knox, Tegan Knox has suffered a torn ACL. Uh, bad news for her, she has been injury prone as far as uh, MCLs, ACLs go. 
Um, it's unfortunate. She's still young. Um, but, uh, I mean, how much can her body handle as far as these injuries go? Apparently after her second surgery, which was, uh, um, I guess would have been May Young Classic, um, she was, uh, thinking about hanging up the boots. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not, uh, she makes a comeback after this one. Um, definitely she's, you know, I always say she's uh, one of Triple H's, um, seemingly favorites, so to speak. She's always held in high regard as far as NXT goes. And um, it's unfortunate because of the fact, you know, it's her body breaking down. And the uh, last thing you want to do is see her permanently injured. Uh, obviously, she's got to go through surgery again, which I think she already has gone through surgery. Uh, but how much, you know, when's enough enough as far as your body goes and the uh, the amount that Tegan Knox has suffered uh, in her young career. So uh, get well soon, Tegan Knox, and we'll have to wait and see whether or not she makes a comeback here. Uh, tag Team Division explodes at Bound for Glory and Victory Road. Uh, so Motor City Machine Guns, Good Brothers, Rascals in the North are going in a four-way battle uh, for the uh, the championship. Uh, Takeover Media Call is um, took place. Uh, Triple H talked about the uh, Tig and Knox, uh, the surgery, uh, moving to Tuesdays, COVID-19. Um, so anyways, guys, check that out. You can go on cwnonline.ca and check out uh, the uh, the media call as well as you can go into uh, YouTube and find it through uh, different sources as well. Uh, Sema was hit by a car while riding a bicycle, suffers multiple injuries. That took place on the 1st, which was yesterday. Uh, he posted on Twitter his uh, arm, his left, I think it was his left arm in a cast. Uh, you know, he's uh, a big old smile on his face, so he's handled it uh, uh, good. But the multiple injuries, it sounds like a disaster when you go and actually read what he had suffered. Uh, was hit by a car on his bicycle over there. But he's Sima. He's tough. He's, uh, uh, you know, he'll be on the mend. He said he's going to make a comeback uh, when he can. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thoughts and prayers and uh, get well for Sima as well. Uh, XFL returning in 2022. That was announced by The Rock as well as Danny Garcia on Facebook. Enough uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Uh, that was announced yesterday. So they'll be back in 2022. So taking next year off. Uh, WB begin. <coughs> Excuse me. WB to begin takeover of talents, Twitch accounts over the next month. Complete crap. So I'll tell you this. So if I change my name to, oh, let's see. Well, actually, you know what? I signed with WB. Uh, they changed my name to Patriots fan. And all of a sudden, I'm on Twitch and everything else. And I, I decided to go on as Patriots fan. Not Chris Maloney, but Patriots fan. Um, try to make money off of the name Patriots fan. Yeah, WWE can come after me. But the fact is, they what, what they want to do right now is basically take anybody who's basically on Twitch, whether or not they're using their WWE name, whether or not they're using their own name, like their real name, and basically say, hey, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up this article to make you sound, or sorry, make you sound, uh, to make you uh, understand how ridiculous this actually is. So this was posted today, actually yesterday. Um, and basically it was confirmed by multiple sources, but, um, while WB will have control over those accounts, and this is supposed to happen in the next four weeks, the individuals will get a percentage of the revenue generated, which will count against their downside guarantee. So essentially they're not making any extra money. WB is basically having a field day with these guys' careers, having a field day with who they are outside of the ring. Uh, you know, personal levels, playing video games, whatever the case may be. I don't agree with it. It's going to be interesting to see where, what happens because, um, as anybody knows, when this story was posted, I think three, four weeks ago, uh, Mark Carano, the same guy that you've seen on Total Divas and everything else, um, had come out and said, yeah, well, we own your name as WWE Superstar, but we also own your real life name as well. Uh, that basically went to uh, shame. Andrew Yang has spoken about it with Chris Van Vliet. Uh, Andrew Yang's commented again on Twitter with regards to this, but basically it's having a side job as an independent contractor, and that's what WWE superstars are, and basically saying, hey, I want to make some money off of Twitch in my own free time, and basically WWE like, well, you know what, we're going to take over your account, and any money that you make, uh, you're not going to be able to get on your own, uh, we're going to put it towards your downside guarantee of your contract, which is absolute crap, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next week or so. Um, yeah, two more big pieces of news. NXT uh, moving to the performance center beginning with TakeOver. So Triple H in the media conference call had said that uh, NXT TakeOver, we're going to see some things that we haven't seen before. This being one of them. So they are moving to the performance center as of this Sunday. It's a new setup. This looks to be a permanent thing. Uh, no announcements as far as right now of what happened with Full Sail, but it looks like they're at a Full Sail for the time being. 
could be a permanent thing. Uh, looking maybe just to save some money, whatever the case may be. But the fact is, yeah, the performance center is taking place uh, this coming Sunday. And uh, going from there, WW 205 Live is also going to be coming from the performance center as well. So um, not sure. I don't, I can't see them doing anything more with um, 205 and SmackDown uh, doing on the pre-show like I was talking about with the Thunderdome. So we'll have to wait and see what goes on there. Uh, big news of the day, WWE bringing back WrestleMania uh, back to Tampa's uh, Raymond James Stadium. Obviously, they were supposed to be there this year. That didn't happen. They went to the Performance Center instead. Uh, L.A. was announced for uh, next year. Uh, SoFi, uh, SoFi, uh, I think SoFi Stadium um, was announced in L.A. And that is not taking place. It looks like they're going back to, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Tampa. Um, big thing about it is this. So if you think about it this way, so we're in the month of October. Uh, we're looking at probably about six months before WB WrestleMania takes place. Um, if they go and they say, hey, you can fill it up one third capacity uh, in a big open air stadium the way they wanted to do it this year. So 70,000 people, Raymond James Stadium, roughly. Um, so if you even take one third of that, you're looking at what, 23,000, so to speak, 23,000 screaming, paying fans watching WrestleMania at the venue that was supposed to happen this year buying merch being there watching the pyro go off social distancing if that's the case in april of next year but the fact is mcmahon wb get the wrestlemania where it was supposed to take place this year so you know what big open air stadium you know i'm all for it um you know we've gotten past the fact that uh, aew was doing daily's place and they were you know having about 700 fans so to speak um why not i mean if uh, we're looking at six months away a lot of changes are being taken place on a weekly basis, and uh, you know it's it's good that they want to bring what they were supposed to bring to the Tampa, the Florida economy, in uh, originally, so to speak. So, uh, good for them. Uh, sucks for LA, but the fact is, is LA, it's uh, uh, you know just as big as New York as far as uh, you know um, marketing and movies and and all that sort of stuff goes, entertainment, so to speak. Uh, so they can always go in 2022. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And then the Cauliflower Alley Club to host a virtual Q&A fundraiser. So that was announced uh, on Slam Wrestling. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that because we're running short in time. But if you want to check that out, head over to slamwrestling.net and check that out. Uh, like I said, there will be a Cauliflower Alley Club uh, virtual Q&A taking place. So that is it for that. Uh, side note here. Um, I was listening to a podcast, uh, uh, live show, so to speak, with Brian Alvarez and Mike Sempervivi of Wrestling Observer Live. They had Colt Cabana on there. Um, the guy's talented. I, I love the guy. Um, he's one of those uh, good guys in wrestling, so to speak, has a lot of knowledge about the business inside the ring, outside the ring, doing this stuff. I learned today the art of wrestling has come, has come back. So I know he had shut it down and he had taken hiatus and the hiatus was basically because of the fact he had said today that he, um, you know, was tr kind of tired of hounding people for interviews and going through the whole routine, just needed a break, uh, step back, started doing retro shows, so to speak. But now he's doing uh, live shows again. Um, the 17th, he had Matt Hardy on the show today. or So yesterday he had Santana Ortiz on the show. It's Art of Wrestling. Um Go to patreon.com forward slash Cole Cabana. I didn't know this either. Uh, you can go to Art of Wrestling. So you can sign up for Art of Wrestling Plus. It's $5 a month. But if you want to hear one of the great podcasters in the business as far as wrestling goes, just a guy who's knowledgeable, has a good voice, uh, very personable as well. I get to see him at the Smash Wrestling Show here in London. Uh, probably close to two years ago, I think, at this point. But the fact is, yeah, support Cole Cabana. Like I said, $5 a month, and you can listen to a lot of uh, inside stuff that, uh, you know, um, doesn't make basically the, the podcast airwaves, so to speak. So support him on Patreon there. Uh, corrections for last week. <laughs> One raid of dynasties did not take place on the 25th. It's going to take place on the 9th instead. I uh, couldn't find any reasoning for that, but my biggest mistake of last week, Adam Cole did appear on the on NXT last week at the end of the show. So case in point, so if you noticed last week's show, um, I didn't watch NXT or AEW, kind of had sushi hangover going on. Well, <laughs> I went on to the websites, kind of went in and found the results and kind of went from there. And But yeah, Adam Cole was at the end of the show and I said, uh, you know, well, I don't know what's going on with Adam Cole. Well, <laughs> he was right there and then he was on NXT this week as well. So uh, that is that. Raw highlights this week. Uh, no retribution. Christian was on the show. 
um, to open it up. Tazawa, Akira Tazawa is apparently still alive, didn't get eaten by a shark. Uh, a lot of tension with the Mysterio family right now. Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke uh, raw debut over, uh, they end up beating Lana and Natalia. And then Orton destroys the legends at the end of the show, Christian being uh, one of those legends. So uh, if you didn't check out Raw, go back and see the highlights. Uh, AEW Dark highlights, no uh, Buffalo Brothers this week. But uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison uh, took on Chaos Project, which is Luther and uh, Serpentico. Uh, Impact highlights this week, uh, Taya Valkyrie and Rosemary defeats Havoc and Nevaeh. Good Brothers defeat the Rascals. The North defeat uh, Austin and Fulton. Uh, so AC Austin, Madman Fulton, that is. ROH highlights, haven't seen this yet. Uh, block A first round match, Fred Yehe, Yehi, Yehi. <laughs> I'll get that name right for next time. Uh, defeat Silas Young. Block B, first round match. Josh the Goods Woods uh, versus Kenny King. Match went to the judges. Woods was declared the winner by a split decision. Uh, Sumi Sakai and Will Ferreira voted for Woods, while Gary Juster went with King. Sakai said the difference was uh, King using a punch to the face. So they are sticking by pure rules. First time it's gone to the judges in the tournament there. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised because I thought King, Kenny King would uh, have won this one. Haven't seen, like I said, haven't watched this. Yes, I will. Uh, but the fact is, yeah, ROH uh, is going strong right now. Uh, from there, we go UWN, UWN Primetime Live results, episode number three. Uh, Trevor Murdoch becomes the new NWA national champion, defeating uh, Aaron Stevens. Uh, NXT highlights, Novik Joseph or Wade Barrett this week. Have any, any reasons why? Uh, Tom Phillips and Beth, uh, Beth Phoenix had done this show. Uh, as far as the commentators go, uh, Blackheart, Shotzi Blackheart defeats Dakota Kai. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart's growing on me. Uh, she's, uh, you know, good good for the nickname Ballsy Badass, so to speak. Uh, very hardcore in the ring. At one point, got dropped on her head in the apron. I was like, holy crap, she's dead. Um, but she, uh, you know, she um, obviously didn't suffer any kind of injuries, so to speak. I don't think of. I haven't heard anything. So, but a hardcore match between, uh, uh, like I said, Shotzi Blackheart and Dakota Kai. Uh, Kushida defeats Tony Nese. Uh, O'Reilly, Balor, and HBK did a promo. You can check that out on YouTube. Uh, Adam Cole defeats Austin Theory. Shut him up. Uh, Adam Cole gets in the ring, says he didn't necessarily like the comments uh, Austin Theory was making. Austin Ke- Theory comes out, you know, decides to be a bit of a jerk. Uh, Cole says, well, why don't you step into the ring before we beat you up as the Undisputed Era. Uh, uh, who is that? Theory comes into the ring. Adam Cole basically dominates and, and beats him up, and that's the end of Austin Theory for this one. And then Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano defeats Io Shirai and Damian Priest in the main event uh, with Priest being uh, pinned by Gargano to lead into NXT TakeOver on Sunday. Uh, AEW highlights, Darby Allen defeats, uh, I almost say <laughs> Cody Starks, but it is uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, Cody agrees to come out to do the, oh, so Cody came out, agrees to do the dog collar match, and then him and Mr. Brody Lee got into a melee. Um... FTR defeats SCU, SCU uh, Adam Page is on commentary. Uh, this is quote rate right from the AEW website. Uh, the announcers received word from Tony Khan about an upcoming tournament. It's an eight-man tournament, single elimination. The finals will be at full gear. And the winner will get a shot at the AEW World Championship title. We can announce three of the eight competitors right now. The first is Jungle Boy. Second is Ray Phoenix. The third is Kenny Omega. And this uh, Excalibur was saying this stuff. Uh, Hangman, is that a shock to you? Asked Jim Ross. He, and Hangman goes, I gotta go, replied Paige, removing his headset and walking away from the broadcast table with his whiskey. Um, so that sets up basically a few... I, I, I don't know if it's going to come down to this, but if Kenny Omega's in this tournament, I guarantee Adam Page is going to be in this tournament as well. So make for uh, some good uh, TV in the next couple, uh, couple weeks here for AEW. Uh, Jericho defeats uh, Isaiah Cassidy. Miro and the Arcade World Record holder Billy Mitchell promo, which was unique. Uh, no idea who the guy was. Had to Google him. Inner Circle MJF backstage jacket promo. That was kind of cool. So Inner Circle sitting in a room. MJF comes in with a box, has a bunch of jackets for everybody. Uh, left out Sammy Guevara. Guevara takes offense. Uh, Jericho and MJF get into uh, uh, spat, so to speak. And Jericho's like, do you want to be part of the inner circle? MJF is like, uh, MJF was like saying, um, should I be part of the inner circle? And they kind of go went back and forth. So again, the MJF and uh, uh, Jericho stuff's continuing. Obviously, it's going to end up in a match, whether it happens this year or next year. But uh, they are good going up against each other. Very similar. A lot of years in difference between the two. But uh, MJF is a definitely uh, like a young version of uh, Jericho. And that, that's a compliment because the fact is a lot of people also compare uh, MJF to um, uh, the late Rowdy Rowdy Piper as well. So 
I'll have to wait and see where that one goes. And then the main event, oh, sorry, one more thing. Britt Baker made a return, uh, defeats Red Velvet, so she looked good in this match. And then John Moxley ends up defeating the Butcher in the main event, uh, Andy Williams. So uh, that was uh, interesting to see Andy Williams in the main event there. Uh, UK highlights, Kenny Williams defeats Ashton Smith and Amir Jordan in a triple threat match. Jenny defeats Zia Brookside, Zia Brookside, sorry. Uh, Noam Dara defeats uh, Alexander Wolf in the NXT UK Heritage, Heritage Cup tournament first round match. Uh, Dunn was the referee and then post, uh, post-match. post uh, Walter and Wolf. So Walter came out uh, with, uh, you know, to uh, be with Alexander Wolf, uh, Imperium, uh, and basically end up feuding with Pete Dunne and Ilya Dragunov uh, in a brawl. I'll tell you this, guys. So the mic thing I think is working out, but I've got to put that little screen thing here. I had it on before the show and then I took it off, but I can hear my peas coming out and it's like poof, you know. So uh, I'll, I'll correct that for next week. So if it's been loud on the, loud on the ears, uh, my apologies. Uh, ratings this week, so Raw, 1,822,000, 0.55 and 18 to 49. Demo, fourth for the night on cable. Uh, AEW, 896, 0.33 and 18 to 49. Twelfth for the night on cable. And then in Canada, they had 81,100 viewers on TSN2, 54,900 in the 25 to 40, so, sorry, sorry, 25 to 54 demo. And they scored eighth for the night for sports broadcast. So first time I've ever had the... Um, uh, results recap sorry ratings here for AEW in Canada NXT 732 uh, 0.19 18 to 49 demo 50th for the night on cable that 50th is not good uh, Smackdown preview quickly reigns to be officially crowned as tribal chief uh, Sami Zayn versus uh, Hardy for the IC championship obviously undisputed champion is Sami Zayn so he's putting the title on the line already and the special KO show with Alexa Bliss uh, we get 205 live preview is basically it doesn't look like any live matches taking place, uh, but they're going to feature an inside look at a title at the title belt between Santos Escobar and Isaiah Swerve Scott coming up NXT TakeOver uh, 31 on Sunday. Uh, New Japan Strong preview main event, David Finley, Jeff Cobb, Rocky Romero and Mysterioso uh, taking on the Bullet Club, which is Jay White, Kenta, Chase Owens and uh, Hiku Luo, Hiku Leo. I'll get that name right, too. Uh, obviously pre-taped as uh, um, Jay White is over there doing the uh, G1 Climax. And then um, Major League uh, Wrestling. So MLW Underground Preview, La Parca taking on Sabu uh, on Saturday there. Impact Wrestling Victory Road uh, is taking place tomorrow night. Check out impactwrestling.com. Uh, you find out the uh, full matches there. Uh, basically just give you guys the highlights just here if I can bring it up quickly. Uh, so Victory Road is taking place tomorrow night, so Saturday, 8 p.m. on Impact Plus. You can sign up, I do believe, for free still. I think you do get like a 30-day trial, so if you haven't checked them out, check that out. Uh, main event, Eddie Edwards and uh, Eric Young for the title. Uh, you've got uh, Impact Women's Championship, Knockouts Championship match. you got Deanna Perrazzo taking on Susie. And then you've got uh, Tommy Dreamer, Brian Myers, Tennille uh, Dashwood taking on Jordan Grace. You've got uh, Reno Scum taking on Heath and Rhino. Um, it says who will answer who will answer defeat row heat challenge don't think that makes a lot of sense with the wordage um, you've also got uh, Ace Austin taking on Carl Anderson taking on Alex Shelley taking on Josh Alexander and like I said 8pm Impact Plus this coming Saturday so tomorrow um, if you're looking for wrestling to watch tomorrow night beyond uh, MLW um, what else we got? Uh, NXT th- TakeOver 31. Like I said, recap prediction show on Sunday. You've got uh, prediction show taking place uh, 3 p.m. live on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And then you'll have the recap show taking place about 10 p.m. on Sunday. Again, live on Facebook, uh, Twitch, and uh, YouTube as well. Um, what do we got going on here? <laughs> I'll post it here. So Scumbags of Wrestling Podcast. KO on SmackDown, another trade before the draft, WTF. I try not to swear on this show. I don't think I have once, uh, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, I don't think it's been, it's been a trade. I don't know. They haven't announced much at all, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the draft, you know what I mean? Because a lot of these guys are just showing up anywhere, uh, wherever they want anyways. So anyways, guys, that is that. Um, geez, I'm running. I, I went too much into my stories in the beginning. I got barely enough time here. Um, where are we at officially? Well, I got 10 minutes till SmackDown here. So let's see if I can get this done. Um, let's do this. MMA. So UFC 253, 
Uh, Adesanya versus Costa took place last Saturday. Adesanya retains by TKO in round two. Uh, results for Bellator 247, which took place yesterday. Uh, that was in Milan, Italy. Uh, Denise uh, Kilholtz uh, starches Kate Jackson in 43 seconds. That was courtesy of MMAfighting.com. Uh, Bellator Euro Series 9 Gallagher, Gallagher versus Eleanor uh, takes place tomorrow. Uh, that is Saturday on the 3rd. Uh, that is Milan, Italy as well. Prelims listed at 1.15 p.m. Eastern, main card at 5 p.m. Eastern, and you can watch that on the Bellator app. So that is, like I said, Bellator Euro Series 9. The UFC Fight Night, Holm versus Aldana, taking place tomorrow as well. UFC Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Uh, prelims are 7.30, main card at 10.30 on TSN5. Rogers has the prelims listed at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, though. So either 7.30 or 8.30, you'll be able to watch the prelims. And then, like I said, it'll, it will be free if you have TSN, uh, the package there. So TSN5 tomorrow night. Uh, main card taking place 10.30, which is kind of weird as opposed to 10 p.m. when they usually go. But, uh, yeah, some UFC uh, as well as Bellator on tomorrow. So, and the last thing I'll do right now is quickly go through G1 results. So, just bear with me one second here. I'm just going to bring up the cwnonline.ca website. Go to the website. Go to the very end where it says hashtag G130. Basically, a little subsection of the uh, CWN website that gives you the uh, G1 um, standings as well as uh, schedule results. Any articles have been posted as well. Quickly go through this. So current standings as of right now, uh, A block is Kota Ibushi with six points, Jeff Cobb with two points, Okada with four points, Tomas, uh, Tomohiro Ishii with two points, Will Ospreay with six points, uh, Shingo Takage with uh, two points, Suzuki with six points, Tai Chi with six points, Jay White with six points, and Yujiro Takahashi still at zero. Uh, standings for the B block are this. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, four points. Juice Robinson, six points. Uh, Goto is two points. Yano is six points. Surprising. Uh, Yoshihashi is two points. Tatsuya Naido, uh, six points. Uh, suffered a loss at the hands of this guy, Sonata, who was one in three. He's got his official two points. But the fact is, Sonata beat... Uh, the double champion there for uh, New Japan for Wrestling. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, ZSJ is Zack Sabre Jr. with uh, four points. Kenta with four points. And then Evil with four points as well. Uh, schedule is this. So next show is taking place Monday, October the 5th. It'll be at 6 a.m. our time. So 6 a.m. Eastern. That's from Kada uh, Kagawa, Japan. Uh, that is the 5th. So that'll be A Block. And the next one for B Block is Tuesday, October 6th. 5.30 a.m. on New Japan World in uh, Hiroshima, Japan. And like I said, that is uh, Eastern uh, Standard Time as well. So those are the next two. And like I said, if you go to hashtag G130 on the CWN website, you scroll all the way through, you can get the results, you can get the pre uh, previews, and all the way at the very end of the page, you can get all the articles that have been posted as well. So check that out, cwnonline.ca, hashtag G130. So... Guys, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of this for right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is take a small little break, uh, show some promos here for the Scumbags of Wrestling, as well as the Knights of the Squared Circle. Get some water into me, come back with independent news, and then finish the show and then watch some SmackDown. So guys, uh, sit back. I'll be right back, okay? Hey, wrestling fans. It's Sean from the Scumbags of Wrestling. Have you checked out our latest t-shirt design? It's inspired by our friends over at London Comic Con. Nigel Lewis of NCL Studios came up with this amazing design of a comic book cover. It features 22 stars of the Ontario Independent Wrestling scene, including Cody Diener, Jody Threat, Casey Spinelli, Tyson Dukes, Brent Banks, Tarek, Sebastian Swab, Halal Beefcake, graduates of the Tyson Dukes Wrestle Factory, and many more. You can get your t-shirt for just $30, or buy the poster for $15. Proceeds from this sale are going to go to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto on behalf of Steven's Wrestling Journey. Steven's an eight-year-old fighting carry malformation, and they're searching for a cure. You can contact me either through our Facebook page, Scumbags of Wrestling, or email me at scumbagswrestling at gmail.com. Get yourself a great t-shirt, with an amazing design and help a wonderful cause at the same time. So contact me today and get your shirt or poster.
Are you a pro wrestling fan? Do you want the latest info on shows and the stars that appear throughout Ontario? Are you looking for information and insight into the independent wrestling scene? Want interviews and information on the big leagues? Then you want Knights of the Squared Circle with Ryan Knight on Coyote 103. Ryan has his finger on the pulse of wrestling in Ontario on every level, and he brings that to you every Sunday at noon. Listen for your wrestling fix with Ryan Knight and Knights of the Squared Circle, Sunday at noon, only on Coyote 103. Hey guys, welcome back. If you listen on audio, thank you very much for being part of the show. If you're watching on video, thank you very much for being part of the show as well. We're still growing episode number seven, but I am enjoying this. And uh, like I said, beyond weekly, uh, we also do uh, CWM predicts and then CWM recap as well. They'll take the uh, next edition will take place this coming Sunday uh, for NXT Takeover 31. So. On the screen right now, hashtag WeRCIW simply stands for We Are Canadian Independent Wrestling. Uh, if you go onto Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, just see all onto Google as well, put in that hashtag. Uh, you'll find everything to do, what I've had to do anything with uh, Canadian Independent Wrestling. So uh, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Canadian Independent Wrestling. You can also check out CanadianIndependentWrestling.ca. Uh, that will forward you to the group as well. I think we're approaching to, I think, close to 360 members. If we're not already there yet, uh, hopefully the uh, goal is to get to 400 by the end of the year. Uh, so, guys, if you're uh, on Facebook and who's not, uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Canadian Independent Wrestling and check that out. Basically, it's a group there to promote your independent stuff, uh, whether or not you're a performer or a promotion, you want to talk independent wrestling. Your podcaster, and you just had uh, somebody on your show. Uh, George Mackay had, uh, I think, uh, Aiden Prince just recently. Uh, you know, uh, you'll see the promos that I had just done as far as the commercials go. Sean Bates of the Scumbags of Wrestling, you'll see him post on there. Uh, Ryan Knight of Knights of the Squared Circle, uh, any of their content as well. But it's basically my way of having a forum to go coast to coast, so to speak. So, uh, you know, from BC all the way to the Maritimes in promoting Canadian independent wrestling. So, again, hashtag we are CIW. Again, not very many shows taking place, and it's uh, becoming <laughs> the norm for me saying this on a weekly basis. But RCW Friday Night Fights, October 2nd and 9th in Calgary, Alberta. RCW Saturday Night Fights, October 3rd, 10th, and 17th in Edmonton, Alberta. Alpha One Wrestling uh, presenting Ruckus, Sunday, October the 18th, 2 p.m. in Oshawa, Ontario. Had seen a post, I think you're only limited to 50 people with regards to indoor uh, venues as far as banquet halls go now. Uh, I think that might have just been put out today. So I know I think originally they had posted 100 tickets for uh, to be on sale, but I think Alpha 1 is only going to be limited to 50 tickets on sale at this point. They are on Facebook as well. You can check out a1wrestling.com. Uh, for more information there. But basically, when it comes down to it, uh, it's unfortunate what we're going through as far as COVID goes and the restrictions and everything else. But um, uh, if you make, you know, if you're looking to ensure that uh, basically a show is taking place, uh, go on to their social media accounts and find out, email them, or like I said, go on to their official website. I think it's a1wrestling.com for Alpha One there. Uh, already talked about our Facebook group, and you can see it there on the screen right there. Um, two other pieces of... of uh, 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 I want to say things, but uh, news uh, taking place. So Steven's wrestling journey, and I'm going to post that right here. So he's a courageous young kid uh, dealing with uh, Kiri malformation. Um, Sean's uh, been an advocate for him for the better part, I think, of two months now. Obviously, you can see in the, the promo that he had done, raising money for Steven's wrestling journey to go to Toronto Sick Kids uh, in Toronto on, on behalf of Steven. Uh, real name is Steven Spice. Uh, has been dealing with his uh, illness, I think, from the time he was born. He's on social media, though, so he's on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. And on YouTube, uh, he's got a series of stuff that he does, one of them being SWJ, Turnbuckle Talk. So um, and it's uh, basically his form of interviewing people as far as his YouTube channel goes. And he had just talked on the 30th, uh, he had posted this anyways, with uh, Daniel Garcia, Mr. Red Death. Uh, Mr. Uh, AEW, uh, you know, uh, coming up, so to speak. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go on to Facebook.com. Uh, you can also go into, uh, maybe I'll show you guys this to, uh, just with a screen share here. I'm already cutting into SmackDown time. So if you have a PVR, you can go back and watch it. But uh, um, uh, Stephen's wrestling journey has is, is been, you know, um, amazing for what he has been doing. Um, not only as far as his interviews goes, but he's also given back. There was a YouTube video of him and his brother buying toys and then donating these toys. 
but uh, I'm just going to show you guys this quickly because I, this I recently figured out and kind of thought was cool. So I'm going to load up this first. I'm not going to play anything because the last thing I want to do is get uh, um, a copyright strike <laughs> against me uh, while I'm doing the CWN stuff here. So if I go share a screen, I'm not going to share the audio. Go Chrome tab, go here, go here. This should work. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to drop this, drop this for the time being. So this is the CWN YouTube channel that I have. Um, the cool thing is I've been able to divide it into sections just recently. And I didn't know I could do this until I saw it on other people's YouTube channels. I was like, you know what, how do I do that? So I went and sure enough, found a YouTube video that actually shows you how to do it. So the very top here, you can see home videos, playlists, channels, all this sort of stuff. And then all of a sudden you can see CWN Weekly Episode 7. We are live now. Imagine that. <laughs> So we go uploads uh, and then you can start doing categories. So hashtag CWN weekly. So all the CWN weekly shows I've done here. Uh, CWN recap is right below that. So all the recap shows I've done. The one that's coming up on Sunday. So that'd be the uh, NXT TakeOver 31. Uh, another one here. So CWN predicts NXT uh, TakeOver 31. So that's 3 p.m., 10 p.m. like I had said. Uh, but the cool thing is down below CWN online. This was a, a little promo here that Steven had done for the Scumbags of Wrestling. Uh, so I quickly did up some graphics for it because the picture that came along with the YouTube vid wasn't the greatest. So I just did this just quickly, but uh, that basically is uh, Steven supporting Scumbags of Wrestling. Uh, so it's kind of cool there. Um, then from there, we go into hashtag we are CIW. So you can see here, we get Scumbags of Wrestling. Uh, we've got, I think that is Courage Pro Wrestling there. We've got interviews taking place. Like I said, George Mackay. Uh, Aiden Prince, the interview that he'd done. So that's a section here. You can go into play all. You can also use this. You can also click on this as well and find all the videos that have been attached to that We Are CIW hashtag. Uh, we Are Scumbags right here. So 21, or sorry, yeah, episode 121, which took place yesterday, going through through 17. I think it goes down to 15 because I think that's when Sean said are doing the, the videos um, as far as scumbags go. But uh, again, you can just go and just click on that and it'll take you to his page. Uh, Canuck Proud, which is kind of cool. This is all matches, events that have taken place that's focused on Canadian wrestling um, uh, talent or, you know, matches that have taken place, like obviously Hogan Warrior at WrestleMania 6. Um, Hogan and Jericho, I never knew existed. Edge Return at the Rumble's got 20 million views, which is kind of cool. And then theme songs down below as well. But um, anyways, guys, if you go to We Are CIW, I think it should be in here. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I got to add it. Well, there we go. <laughs> so I got to add Steven's uh, video, but his interview with Daniel Garcia, I got to add it here and I'll do that sometime tonight. But guys, I just want to quickly show you that. Um, like I said, you can go into uh, our YouTube account now and uh, have everything a little more balanced out as far as, um, uh, you know, the channels and, and everything separated so you can find things a lot more easily that way. Uh, last little bit of news is this. And uh, Sean, uh, the Scumbags of Wrestling, had made reference to this earlier. So I'm just going to quickly bring it up. And I thought this was a cool thing because it's, it's new. It's through a, a website called Indiegogo. It's called Go Hard Pro Holiday Special. And uh, in these weird times, we want to give something back to the wrestling community. Uh, this is uh, presented by Brendan Cofield. Uh, who is otherwise known as uh, um, Holden Albright. Uh, so anyways, uh, they're raising money, uh, $1,500, which is a flexible goal. Uh, they've raised $359 so far by six people, which is actually kind of cool. Short summary, hi, I'm Brendan, uh, a.k.a. Holden Albright, Ontario, uh, Canada Independent Pro Wrestler. I was going to run a show under the new promotions banner, Go Hard Professional Wrestling, on uh, November the 22nd. Show is unfortunately not happening to the world events. I wanted to provide an escape for people for the idea of hosting a, a holiday special popped into my mind. Taking from Backyard Pro this past summer, a feuds and match stipulations will be based off classic holiday movies and themes. I'd love to see the Home Alone uh, play out in, in this series here. Uh, this will be a pro wrestling. There, there will be pro wrestling in a ring with trained and well-known wrestlers on a closed set under strict health guidelines. But I want to provide the uh, greatest supporters I've personally encountered the, uh, the opportunity to be part of the process. And then what we need and what you get. So the show will happen no matter what. All donations will be put to, into the product. There are no actual tickets and will be filmed on a closed set in front of no fans. My goals are broken down and will determine just how big this can be. And he goes on to say, so that is part of Indiegogo. 
um for like i said the i think it's go hard uh wrestling is is what uh, holden has uh, announced it at but guys uh it will have it up on the cwm website momentarily you can also check it out on the cwm group on facebook for more information of this uh but like i said it's a, a flexible goal of 1500 and uh he's got uh, six backers 35 days left to raise the money he's already at 359 dollars so absolutely amazing there. So again, support Canadian independent wrestling. Hashtag we are CIW. Uh, you know, it, these trying times where we're not seeing live wrestling, we haven't seen live wrestling in a bit. Uh, go and, uh, you know, go on to Indiegogo and uh, help Holden. Go on to Pro Wrestling Tees. Go on to the wrestling uh, re- websites, the official websites for these promotions. Buy some merch. Uh, donate some money, you know, whatever the case may be, and uh, help support a good cause. And in saying that, uh, Scumbags of Wrestling basically said their shirt was amazing. <laughs> so they uh, uh, buy one of those shirts as well. I think Sean said he was extending the sale uh, through this weekend. Uh, so basically it'll be uh, $10 for a poster, uh, pretty kick, uh, pretty cool poster, and then uh, I think it's $25 for the T-shirt, knocked down from 30 uh, might even be twenty dollars, but no, I think it's uh, is it twenty or t- you think with the amount of time I've actually seen that commercial, I would know uh, how much the uh, the shirt costs. But um, anyways, guys, it is on the Scumbags of Wrestling Facebook group, so forward uh, Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash Scumbags of Wrestling, or you can check it out through uh, cwnonline.ca, or you can check it out on any of our social media accounts as well. So, guys, that is it as far as uh, independent wrestling goes. We talked about pro wrestling. We've talked about uh, mixed martial arts a little bit there. Uh, We're a little bit long-winded in the beginning. My apologies for that. SmackDown is up and running, so I'm going to end this and and get on to watching SmackDown. But I want to mention this. Um, CWN Weekly episode number 8 is taking place next week. So next Friday, uh, October the 9th. And that will be Thanksgiving weekend. So it'll be a live show again. So uh, I will be doing it on the 9th through Facebook Live and Twitch. Uh, so check us out for Episode 8 next weekend for Thanksgiving weekend. We've also got CWM Predicts uh, NXT TakeOver 31 taking place this coming Sunday. Uh, that'll be 3 p.m. live on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. We've also got CWM, uh, CWM uh, Recap that'll take place Sunday as well. So 10 p.m. Facebook Live and YouTube. And uh, again, yeah, the recap shows, the preview shows, prediction shows, and then CWN Weekly. Um, I've been enjoying doing this. I love focusing on CWN. Uh, you know, it kind of puts a smile on my face to, to see it start to grow again. And like I said, we're going on, well, we've existed for 11 years. We're going on 12 years in January as far as the whole concept goes. If you look behind me, you can see that was the original, that was the original logo that was designed. That was the original logo that was on the website. And obviously, uh, we've we've grown since then. Uh, two more things to say before I, I sign off. Number one is this. Check out this website. So cpwhof.ca. That's Canadian Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame presented by CWN. Not the official Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame uh, that was produced by Slam Wrestling. I think Greg Oliver had said that he's going to bring it back. It's just a, a matter of time. So uh, not to step on his toes. This is uh, CPWHOF, uh, so Canadian Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, presented by CWN. Uh, excuse me. This will be basically a joint task, uh, a joint uh, project uh, taking place between myself Sean Banks of the Scumbags of Wrestling. He was one of the original uh, people behind CWN, so Canadian Wrestling Network, back in the day, back on January 18th, 2009, so 11 years ago. Uh, I guess it'll be 12 years in, in January, so uh, we wanted to present a Hall of Fame. We're doing it, and we're going back and forth with the ideas. Uh, once something solid has been set up, and when I say that, wink, wink, uh, next Friday... I will release the uh, the news as far as what the Hall of Fame is going to entail, uh, the categories, uh, how you can vote, uh, this and that. So wink, wink. It might be episode eight of CWN uh, weekly. Where I'll uh, shed some news on how the uh, the actual Hall of Fame is going to take place and how you can vote. So uh, check that out next week. Uh, again, so cpwhof.ca is the official. Uh, website for that that'll take you to the group for the time being but there will be an official website uh, coming up in the next couple of months so look for that last thing i want to mention is this and it's important to everybody so last week uh was uh, uh pediatric uh, pediatric cancer awareness month uh so hence the fact if you saw the cwn logo last month you saw the little yellow ribbon attached to it well this month of october obviously uh hashtag breast cancer awareness month so 
you can see our logo up in the corner and I'm pointing it as it, you guys can see me pointing at it, but uh, you can see my logo, the CWN logo with the uh, the pink uh, ribbon hanging from it. It's the only thing that's red right now. Um, anything I do as far as uh, graphics go, as you can see the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, the hashtag CWN online up in the corner there, everything's going to be pink for the entire month. So normally the graphics are the red CWN colors, but uh, this month for the month of October. It's going to be to raise awareness for breast cancer. Uh, so hashtag breast cancer awareness month. Everything I do is going to be in pink. And to highlight that, like I said, the CWN logo has got the uh, the pink ribbon hanging off of it. So guys, if you have the opportunity to support breast cancer uh, awareness, um, you know, definitely uh, check that out here in Canada, can uh, cancer.ca. Um, but uh, a lot of groups, uh, that you, a lot of stuff you can do. I know my, my wife has done C, uh, CIBC run for the cure. Uh, you know, back in the day. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people out there and uh, cancer has hit a lot of us. So uh, check that out and support them if you can. So hashtag once again, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so from there, you can see me. Uh, well, not see me, but you can follow me uh, at Chris Maloney CWN on Instagram as well as Twitter. Uh, so check me out there. As always, you can hit us back here at the show. Feedback at cwnonline.ca. Uh, you know, anything you want to see added to the show, anything you want to see me talk about, any questions you might have, check that out. So feedback at cwnonline.ca. And again, once again, at Chris Maloney CWN for Twitter as well as Instagram. So guys, I have been long winded, uh, almost at the mark I was for last week. But again, like I said, this coming uh, Sunday, CWN predicts uh, NXT TakeOver 31 as well as uh, NXT TakeOver 31 the recap show taking place 10 p.m. on Sunday. They're both going to be live. So if you're available, you want to check those out, check those out. The recap show, like I said, for whatever reason, is getting the most hits. So uh, thank you very much for those. So um, I guess that's it. So, guys, enjoy your week. We'll see you next week for CWN Weekly Episode 8. And it's been cold here in London today, so uh, bundle up. So, um, guys, enjoy your week, and we'll see everybody again uh, next week. All right, take care.